So today's topic is the second part of the dynamic retinoscopy. In the last video, we have discussed about every single concept of the dynamic retinoscopy regarding the shears method. And you know that in shared method, we can find only the lag of accommodation. But our next technique of dynamic retinoscopy is MEM method, right? The monocular estimate method. The indications of the MEM method, the monocular estimate method are the same as if the patient came in your clinic with the complaints of like near blur, near headache, near asthenopia, or any type of near complaints, any type of accommodative dysfunctioning, any type of accommodative problems, any type of virgins issues, right? So we can perform the MEM method, the monocular estimate method. And as we have discussed that the shares method is only to find the lag of accommodation, but the MEM method, the monocular estimate method, we can in monocular estimate method, MEM method, we can find lag of accommodation as well as the lead of accommodation. You know very well about the lag and the lead of accommodation. So in case of the lag of accommodation, you know that lag of accommodation is actually uh, the deficiency of the plus power, right? So if a patient is deficient to the plus power, this condition is called the lag of accommodation, right? And in lag of accommodation, we always observe the width movement in the patient's pupil. But if there is lead of accommodation, we always find against movement in the patient's pupil. Why? Because against movement only is there when the patient is myopic. And what is myopia actually? Myopia is actually the excess of the plus power. That's why we find the against movement in the patient's pupil. And in case of hypermetropia, there is deficiency of the plus power. And that's why we find with movement in the patient's pupil. So in case of dynamic retinoscopy, we are not going to say that patient is hyperopic or myopic. We are going to say that patient is of lag of accommodation or patient is of lead of accommodation. In case of lag of accommodation, the plus power is deficient. That's why we find with movement. And in case of lead of accommodation, patient is of excess of plus power. That's why we find against movement. And now what about the working distance in MEM method? We have discussed about the working distance in the last video in Sheard's method of dynamic retinoscopy. But in this case, the procedure is the same, right? In MEM method, the working distance in adult is 40 centimeter like in Sheard's method. But in case of a ch child, the working distance is Harman's distance. You know very well about the Harman's distance, right? If I put, if patient put his fist under his chin, the distance between this fist and this elbow. This distance is called the Harman's distance, right? And the Harman's distance is used in children, right? But in case of the adult, we always use 40 centimeter. Or you can use patient's desired working distance. If patient work at 30 centimeter, your working distance should be 30 centimeter, right? If patient's works at 40 centimeter, your working distance of retinoscopy, of dynamic retinoscopy should be 40 centimeter, right? So in adult, more or less 40 centimeter. And in case of children, the Harman's distance. Now, what are the requirements for this test? For this MEM method of dynamic retinoscopy, first of all, your room illumination should be dim, right? But the illumination of the retinoscope, the illumination system should be very illuminated, right? Is much illuminated but the room illumination should be dim right and now you have to put a special series of cards on the head of the retinoscope as you can see in the screen right and you know that in every time I have mentioned many time in the last videos that in dynamic retinoscopy the patient will exert his or her accommodation right as you can see on your screen in this type of card which is actually mounted on the retinoscopic head, the patient, you will ask the patient to look at that optotypes on the cards, right, which is actually mounted on the retinoscopic head. When the patient will look at the minimal line on the card of the retinoscope, then he or she will exert his accommodation, right. And in dynamic retinoscopy, the accommodation of the patient should be at its maximum. And while neutralizing, you have to go as close to the patient as the line of sight, right? And do not uh, 
vary your working distance if the desired working distance is 40 centimeter so uh, while you are neutralizing don't go too close to the patient and don't go too far to the patients from the desired working distance right remain as close as to the line of sight and measurement should be made the measurement of neutralization should be made one second per lens right to minimize the dazzle of the light the neutrality of the patient's pupil is depends upon the movement of the the movement inside the pupil and the lens so first of all we will see that what is actually the movement inside the patient's pupil if the movement is with so it means it is lag of accommodation and we will neutralize this with movement with a plus lens in case of lag of accommodation but in case of lead of accommodation we always observe the against movement in the patient's pupil and to neutralize that against movement we always use minus spherical lenses so neutral neutrality always depends upon the movement inside the patient's pupil with or against right accordingly as lag or lead of accommodation so in mem method we will learn we will discuss both of the methods both of the problems like lag of accommodation and in case of lead of accommodation first of all suppose we are going to perform mem method dynamic retinoscopy regarding mem method in the patient of the lag of accommodation right we actually find with movement in the patient's pupil and now we are going to learn we are going to find the lag of accommodation in that patient right which actually came in your in your clinic with accommodative problems with reading problems right and his age you can say less than 40 years you can say 25 or 20 years and you know that in this age this is not presbyopia if you lose your accommodation in early age like in 20 in 15 in 10 years of age in you can say 30 years of age in these age groups if you lose your accommodation this is not a presbyopic condition this is simply loss of accommodation right to find the lag of accommodation because we have found the with movement inside the patient's pupil and we know that we always find with movement in case of lag of accommodation right so when we perform retinoscopy in that patient suppose the supposed value on 90 meridian we actually neutralizes we actually neutralize the vertical meridian suppose at plus 3 and the horizontal meridian at plus 4 for example and now again we are not going to deduct any working distance from the neutral points we have a detailed discussion in the last video so we can find one of them as our spherical you can find you can choose your spherical as plus 3 or you can choose your spherical as plus 4 this is your choice so I'm going to take plus 3 as my spherical correction so plus 3 to find the cylinder I have to move from plus 3 to plus 4 the gap between these two values is 1 right so 1 is my cylinder what about the sign of the cylinder actually we are moving from lesser plus to greater plus so we are actually moving to the plus direction so sign of the cylinder would be in plus right and what about the axis of the cylinder axis are actually our sphere is at 90 meridian or vertical meridian so axis are 90 degree so this is the final prescription of dynamic retinoscopy in mem method right and now we are going to learn the lag of accommodation and you know that to find the lag of accommodation you have to know that the lag of accommodation or lead of accommodation right it vary patients to patients right suppose in a normal patient sorry in a normal person you can say there could be lag of accommodation there could be lead of accommodation so from 0.5 if you find 0.5 to 1 lag of accommodation or lead of accommodation in any person this is normal right this is very important point i repeat that if you find during dynamic retinoscopy if you find lag of accommodation or lead of accommodation of 0.5 to 1 this is totally normal there is no any issue with the accommodation if you find during retinoscopy the lag of accommodation or lead of accommodation ranges from 0.5 to 1 
there is no any abnormality regarding accommodation this is normal right so our final prescription was plus 3 with plus 1 cylinder at 90 degree right so to find lag of accommodation you know that our lag of accommodation which is from 0 0.5 to 1 is normal in case of lag of accommodation or lead of accommodation so we have to deduct this value from the neutral points right or the final prescription so i will deduct 0.5 from plus 3 i am taking 0 0.5 as normal lag so when i will deduct 0 0.5 from plus 3 the answer would be 2.50 spherical with the same cylinder So this is actually this 2.5 is actually the lag of accommodation. So another thing, keep it in mind that the cylinder in case of static retinoscopy or in case of dynamic retinoscopy, the cylinder would be the same because you know that there is no any difference because the cylinder is nothing to do with the accommodation. The spherical correction is totally related to the accommodation, not cylindrical correction. So, cylindrical correction is nothing to do with the accommodation. So, the value of astigmatism, the value of cylinder would be the same in case of static retinoscopy or dynamic retinoscopy, right? But in case of static or dynamic retinoscopy, the spherical correction would be variable, right? It can be less or it can be high. And now, another patient which is of lead of accommodation, and you know. In the patient of lead of accommodation we always find against movement right and in against movement we always neutralize that against movement with the minus spherical lenses so in lead of accommodation suppose this is up our optical cross right so our 90 meridian or vertical meridian is neutralized at minus uh, 4 right and the horizontal meridian or 180 meridian is, is neutralized at minus uh, 2.00 right so this is our optical cross the patient is of lead of accommodation why because we have found the against movement in the patient's pupil so we know that the patient is of lead of accommodation so after you know that minus 4 is neutral point at 90 meridian minus 2 is neutral point at 180 or horizontal meridian so now we are going to find the resultant or concluded prescription suppose we take minus 4 as our spherical correction to find the cylinder we will move from minus 4 to minus 2 the gap is of 2 sine we are actually moving from higher minus to lower minus lesser minus so we are actually moving towards the plus side to the plus direction so sine would be of plus axis would be 90 because our spherical correction is at 90 meridian so axis of the cylinder would be 90 degree so this is our a resultant or concluded prescription with dynamic retinoscopy in the patients of lead of accommodation so you know that we have discussed already in this case of lag of accommodation you know that 0.5 to 1 lead or lag could be there in every person or it could be very right in patient to patients right the lead, lead of accommodation or lag of accommodation can vary patient to patient right so we take 0.5 as 0 0.5 as normal lead of accommodation or lag of accommodation if 0.5 if 0 0.75 or 1 is there in any patient lead of accommodation or lag of accommodation this is normal right so we have find minus 4 as our resultant value we have to deduct this value from minus 4 so when we subtract 0 0.5 from minus 4 the answer would be minus 3.50 we are not nothing to do with the cylinder cylinder would be the same in case of dynamic or static so our resultant spherical value is minus 3.5 so minus 3.5 is our lead of accommodation in patient right but remember in every type of dynamic retinoscopy lag of accommodation lead of accommodation shares method or 
MEM method, monocular estimate method. Patient is looking at near. Patient is looking at the card, at the series of the card, which is actually mounted on the head of the retinoscope. I repeat, in static retinoscopy, the patient's accommodation should be at rest. But in case of dynamic retinoscopy, patient will always look at near at 40 centimeter right so he or she can exert accommodation and one more thing that in static retinoscopy our purpose is to find to correct our refractive errors like myopia like hypermetropia or astigmatism but in case of dynamic retinoscopy we are nothing to do with the refractive errors we are not going to correct our refractive errors dynamic retinoscopy is not to correct refractive errors but then what is the function of the dynamic retinoscopy to find the lead of accommodation to find the lag of accommodation to find any abnormality in the accommodation to find any abnormality in the versions right to correct the any near problems like near headache like near diplopia like near asthenopia or like near blur